plug my headphones in too. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I can't hear you. That was that was headphones and microphone not plugged right. in there. I thought yeah. it, I thought I connected to like a Bluetooth Bluetooth device or something, and I couldn't hear nope. you for some reason. Nope, that was that was I was way too excited about my shades and my beads. True that. And, and my candle that I got going on over here because I'm mm. like fully spooky season mode right now. Yeah, me too. Hey, fuck yeah! What's what do you got? You got some kind of like fall harvesty scent going on? No, mine is. Uh, it's, it's it's interesting name. Um, orange vanilla dream sickle. No. I say no to the I okay listen citrus and vanilla I'm fine with that scent I like that scent those those orange creamsicle things fucking gross bro gross bro all all around gross I don't like though if it was just an orange flavored like push pop thing or like if it was like just an orange citrus flavored without the cream whatever in it I think I'd be fine with it there's something about the flavor and texture mix of it that upsets me. So you're not down for an orange float? I am not down for an orange float. I'm not <laughs> really into a root beer float either, though. Like, well, I guess not. I mean, it's more of a carbonation thing or like a textural. I, right? you know, <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, like, I think it's probably, I don't know. I have a thing about like yogurt and smoothies, too. So maybe it's just kind of dairy doesn't yeah. work like has to like i'm kind of picky about it i guess i don't know yeah. when i was a kid i went through an obsession with floats and i would with, try i tried every kind of float there could be every fucking soda i could think of i tried in a float i love it that's that's yeah. amazing oh by but, the way i'm johnny I, and i'm Haley, and this, this is, is johnny, johnny Haley. Haley. day, day of, of fun, fun. I love your jacket, by the way. It's very like it's a it's a drug rug. You never. I know. I have one of those. It's a what? It, it's like very it's sort great. of woven, like it's yarn, like Mexican, really. It's like a Mexican blanket. It's like is that is that a politically correct term to use? A I Mexican think so. Blanket. I think so. I mean, I have one right here that I would call a Mexican blanket. It is a that blanket you... that my mother brought back from Mexico. That's so got, Mexican okay, it's got native. that style. I no, I get yeah. it. It's like there's some. I don't. I don't know. It's like a very well, they, thick woven fabric sort yeah, of. Yeah, it, it's they make like they make blankets a certain style. You know what I mean? Like I like it. I have one. I have one that I got. Um, yeah. I think me and Aisha like went and got like the same one somewhere. Yeah, these are off Amazon. I can't remember what oh. they are, but they're they're no, not. We, we on hit the up inside, one of those. There's like there's like uh, actual like thermal stuff, so it's like an actual yeah. sweatshirt. It's not yeah. like wind. You know, wind can't really get through it, so it's pretty nice. I like it. No, I have the one I have is nice yeah. like that, but it's like too big for me, so it's kind of like yep. awkward to wear. So it's like well, I have. I'm kind of a weird person with that too because I have a, I have a weird body. For a person that's as tall as I am, they think I weigh 400 pounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like it's hard to find clothes that fit. Like I'm in a weird. Yeah, I'm in a weird. Kind, buffer, okay, kind of like how like I'm too short for work. pants to ever be the right length. I'm constantly yeah, absolutely. stepping on my jeans. Yeah. It's like, I'm just like, I'm kind of tall and I'm kind of narrow. So it's like, I'm just, most, just of the, most of the of... shirts I buy, I'm just swimming in them and I hate it. Or like, you know, just like a, an, uh, you like can't a double. Go, you can't go a I size go down or it's like, or it, it does, still doesn't fit right. I'm just swimming in a double X. So it's like, I have to get an XL. Let's go on a quest to find (laughs) like the best like place where we could like have merch printed that would have like awesome shirts that fit appropriately and like pants that or dresses that, you know, Mm -hmm. are are skanky short enough that they look just like the appropriate length on me because that's how short I am. Like when I go to that music festival in Sioux Falls Mm -hmm. and I, uh, I look at like I'll I'll usually get three or four band shirts there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if it's printed on a shitty t-shirt, 
I'm not getting it. You know what I mean? Because it's like I don't give. Oh a no, fuck you want you want that nice like because you get a lot of those like print on demand merch type places that have like super nice material like you know yeah. i always think is like uh-huh. college gift shops or like college student merch like you mm-hmm. know what i mean like that stuff mm-hmm. always has like really nice material in the sweatshirts yeah. and like t-shirts and stuff yeah well like my buddy he's in a band in the cities and he's i, uh, love- he bought, a, I bought a shirt from them and i was like I just told them, I basically thanked them for using a quality shirt because most people use just bullshit shirts that shrink in the wash in the first wash. You know what I mean? No, yeah. Like when you have like some of that merch that's printed on like really nice material, that's yeah. yeah. Like I no, I'm totally with you. I, by the way, I do love that we have just like instantly automatically slipped into old uncle auntie corner <laughs> <laughs> immediately. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I do love your shades. My, I got my, I got some copper colored shades going on for our silliness this evening yeah. these Am are the I... only ones that are really appropriate for me for like indoors because i can still see with them on yeah no these ones are kind of like i'm sure they're like it's a little weird because you can see my ring yeah. lights in them and they look like pupils and that's kind of fun <laughs> yeah and i keep but... it relatively low lit in here so it's you know no yeah it's like so i have the ring lights on because these are so dark <laughs> like yeah. i wasn't gonna have my ring lights on but <laughs> well, yeah, I can see it. He's on. Yeah, I can see it in the. Uh, these the, are definitely meant for bright sunshine. Yeah, for sure. These are these are vampire glasses for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we went on kind of a, a spiral on finding. Oh, look with death. Look at that. Yeah, mate. This is what that is... one I was talking about. Convicted melon. It's quite good. I like it. Like what melon? Liquid. About? Like liquid death. Sponsor us. Is it like watermelon? I don't know what kind of it just says convicted melon. Okay. I like it. I'm swinging hard once again. Fresca. With a fresca. I love Let's, it. I mean, my my brother, like, in, oh like my God, my, is fresca. My friend not and my like... brother, or whatever, like the band that we're in. Yeah. We always said that we want, if we want, if we got any sponsor, we want to be sponsored by Fresca. No, like Fresca, sponsor the podcast. Where yeah. we're, I'm down. Liquid Death and Fresca. Good. Fresca like, makes most... me think of hanging out at my dad's house eating. Do you remember French Toast Crunch when that came out? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, so in love with that stuff. French Toast Crunch is way better than Cinnamon Toast Crunch. A hundred percent. Because it Jason actually stays you. crunchy. Yep. Yep. Jason, will, Jason would fight you tooth and nail on that. But it's like. <laughs> Let's have yeah. that argument. Like. There's... To ha- no, I'm... to hell with fucking French toast crunch. It gets mushy and like the to no time at all. Like you have like to the cinnamon toast crunch. The cinnamon toast crunch, yeah. Like the French toast crunch, those fucking things. Like if you eat that stuff dry, it's gonna break your teeth. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I love it. Like, I don't care. There's way too much fucking cinnamon on cinnamon toast crunch too. I think. Yeah, sometimes if you inhale wrong, it's like you inhale a bunch of cinnamon and sugar and like, well, get that caught in the back of your throat. Yeah, well, it all washes off of it, so it's like at the yeah. end, duck with sugar, fucking milk. Yeah. I know French toast crunch all the way. <laughs> right, French it. toast crunch. What's your favorite cereal of all time? I know this. We went on a tangent again. Once again, I know. Who cares? Whatever. No, French toast crunch. Honestly, <laughs> is a little bit just really? way left turn. I don't. Who cares? Yeah, I love. It. I do. I love it. I don't know. I what gonna... do you like for cereal? I'm kind of a weird one. My favorite cereals ever are. Yeah. Do you remember Blueberry Morning? I don't. It's what basically is that? it's basically honey bunches of oats with blueberries in it. Oh, I'd be down for that. I love honey bunches it's of oats. It's fucking good. It's so like, good. They, um, I want. I like those ones that are like it's all the crunchy stuff. Like yep. it's just without. I, I love that shit. Yeah, but they used to sell. They would sell. Um, there's a, uh, and then like banana nut crunch. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, no, I I've, I'm pretty sure I bought that recently. I yeah. but, like. Well, they sell blueberry morning too, but it's under a different name. I can't remember what it is. It's like it's like blueberry nut crunch or something. I don't know. It's it's like right. No, next but to like yeah, honey thing. bunches of oats, but without the cornflakes in it. It's just the crunchy bits, the granola kind of stuff. Yeah. I dig like, that stuff. I like that too. Like I uh, like for me with cereal, I want things to be crunchy, and that's the thing yep. that like 
I don't like about like some of the more like, especially when you get into like, you know, um, like what am I thinking of with the marshmallows? Lucky Charms. Lucky like, Charms. Those are okay, but it gets yeah. soggy too fast. Like yeah. for well, like the Captain Crunch, I was the one like I always want the all berries because it's all super crunchy. Yeah. Well, you're gonna hate my second choice for the best cereal. Banana Night Crunch is not is not it. I'm just I was just saying like that they're like in that realm. Say, I think they're made by the same people. So yeah. But um, my my second favorite. It, I, I'm not saying that the first one's my ultimate favorite. These are just my two favorites. But um, I love Cinnamon Life. The ones that are like, uh, it's that, again, they're like hard and crunchy, right? Like they're like those. Not, they, well, it's kind of like. Uh, if you get to it right away, yeah. Oatmeal but if you squares? Let it sip, it's like an oatmeal square, but like yeah. it's thin. You know, it's like. um. Oh, it's, it's kind of like checks, but it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, wheat, kind of like wheat checks. instead of like corn, I think, or something like that. But uh, yeah, See, yeah. I like that but stuff too. But it's again, it gets get soggy mushy. too fast. Oh yeah, that gets real soggy real fast. But you no, know what? Can't deal with it. Cinnamon life soggy is not a bad thing. I don't think. I because mean, it's it really better than some others. So no, I uh no. It just takes on a lot of. I want milk. my cereal to be crunchy. I'm That's not true. trying to eat. Like weird stale yeah. bread pudding. I don't know. I, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. No. And then I'm, oh. kind of, I'm weird about fruit too, though. Like Asia always gives me shit because because she's like, you always want your fruit to be like not like not ripe yet, and I'm like, I do. I want it to be crunchy and tart and like a little bit, you know. Well, I mean, pucker I, up a I, little. I buy fruit that's like not all the way right because it's like all oh, let it sit for a day and let it kind of right you know what i mean i'll let it get there no, like my blueberries i want my blueberries to be crunchy and tart like i like a plum that's okay. like kind of crunchy like yeah, yeah. yeah. so like, you if like... you get if you give me an apple that is not crispy crunchy i'm not eating it i can't do it yeah if i'm gonna go apple i usually go uh what are the what are the green ones are the granny smith apples yeah, some of them. I like apples. gala apples and pink lady apples. Okay. I also love honey crisp apples are also really good. There's few apples better than a green apple in my book. A green apples really? so good. They're just sour. They're good. Yeah. No, They're I like get it. I like the sour. sour too. Hey, oh, I'm yeah. with it. But speaking of <laughs> sour. Yeah. Megan, when things right? turn sour that were super fun. Oh, shit. Listen, but I don't like, give a shit. I want an AI. Okay, spoiler alert. We watched Megan, it? the AI yep. robot movie. <laughs> yep. I fucking we, uh, loved it. It was interesting. Yeah, I, I, like, we were gonna we were gonna watch Creature of the Black Lagoon, but we, we decided we we ended up finding that wasn't free. So yeah, so we went for Megan. Uh, but like I really enjoyed it. Like I I was, you know, yeah, kinda, it was like was kind of rooting for for Megan. Even though, like, I'm usually one of those that I'm like, leave the dogs alone. Why you gotta, <laughs> why they always gotta fuck with the dogs in the horror movies? Just skip it. Well, yeah. Leave them alone. Well, isn't it because the dog bit the little girl? No, yeah, I'm just right? saying, yeah. like, there's well, always I get, some. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but it's like a trope it. in horror movies that, like, oh, the dog is the first thing that the whatever <laughs> you know? kills. And it's like, leave the animals out of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she did go on that side of the fence, so. You know. It's true, but <laughs> I really loved the look of it. I don't care. I want to talk yeah. to AI robots. I want to have a conversation with an AI robot. Have you like? Have well, you seen really... some of those the the AI robots that are like out there? I think is Sophia is yeah. the one that's the like the most intelligent or whatever. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a few of them, uh, like stuff like that, but like. It never really crossed my mind. Like when I was watching that movie, I was like, this never like talking to an AI robot. I don't know if it ever really crossed my mind as something I would would or would not want to do. I don't really have reasons for either. You know what I mean? I guess. Really? I'm super well, I, fascinated I by AI and like AI yeah. robots. I love I remember there was a um there was a Robin Williams movie uh, a while back mm -hmm. where he was it was like he was a robot trying to become more human. So he kept having like weird 
surgeries done to make him more human, right? Yeah. I think something like that, yeah. Yeah, so kind of like, I don't know. And that one, so usually, I would say usually I kind of get like annoyed when there's always these like the doom and gloom <laughs> sort of like technology is going to kill us kind of, you yeah. know, Terminator. And I'm like, come on, guys, let's not look on the yeah. dark side of it. But I really, I don't know. I liked this movie. I had, I think the, I wanted to look it up. Is it, is there like an actress that is like, how did they do that? The AI robot? I, I, I don't know. I, I would, I would say it's got to be an actress in like a bodysuit. You know what I mean? So it's like they can project whatever image. Yeah. Jenna Davis. Was yeah, I, I figured it was a real person. I don't, but no, I am interested in like how they like did the effect of. I don't know. I would. I should have looked that up because I find that interesting. Because it does have a very sort of like robotic look, you know, and like the eyes are very ookily spookily. The way that they're, yeah. they're you know, their cameras they're and they always, get those shots yep. where they they zoom in on the camera like. Doing the yeah. Terminator thing, you know, assessing the whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're always like scanning your emotions and shit, too. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that kind of mean. interesting? I wonder what's the first movie that would have done that sort of. Because that's something that like I immediately <laughs> thought of Terminator where, you know, you're seeing the through the eyes of when you're seeing like through the eyes of the robot, like and you're seeing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Where it looks like you're essentially, you know, seeing the scene through their eyes and it's got that computer screen with all the readouts. Like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember. There's a movie I'm thinking of, but I can't, I can't, I can't remember what it is. But I yeah, think they also did that. that in uh, Robocop, didn't they? Yeah. Ro I think Robocop had something to do with like it, it would, um, it would tell him like if it's a threat or not, was or something like that, right? Right. But I like just that sort of particular yeah. like film technique of like sh the scene being seen through the eyes of the robot like you are yep. the robot yeah yeah for right? sure yeah and i then kind then of wonder um, like where was when was the first time that that was like utilized in film used? yeah seeing like, through yeah. the eyes of a robot maybe or, or a cyber. i don't know it, 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 that, i'm, in, I don't I'm know. interested at <laughs> what if someone out there knows johnny haley dof at gmail.com like, do tell us because I'm fascinated. For sure. I am. Well, I'm was, super um... fascinated. And I think just because I was so I find something really very exciting about the idea of like AI robots that become very humanoid, like and yeah. very realistic, but also like intelligent and emotionally to some degree. Even yeah. though that's not and I think, you know, by definition, AI does not have the capacity for emotions, right? Well, I mean I don't know. I like isn't wouldn't AI be anything you would basically program it to be so you could program it to have emotions or not? Right. So, yeah. but it's like it's still an artificial emotion, right? Yeah. Like that's the thing that really kind of like fascinates yeah, me sure. about just that sort of that dream world movie angle of you know <laughs> right. that she because like it is really interesting to watch the like the way they build her little transition from being just a program into like being really yep. vindictive. Right. Yep. Like, I think it's interesting. Yeah. Obviously I like the idea of, you know, having a robot friend and things go really well and we just have <laughs> splendid fun trips to Paris and Australia and then whatever. And, you know, my no, AI no. robot friend knows how to print <laughs> currency in any country. Just, yeah. you know, on demand. So you just always have cash. <laughs> yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. Would I that mean, not be your best friend? An AI robot? An AI robot an yeah. AI robot that could print currency in any country? Yeah. I'd dig it. I'd be for, for sure. But you, you, well, you would have to think, wouldn't you, that get stolen from me very, very quickly? <laughs> I don't, but maybe it's like a genie situation and nobody else knows. Oh, maybe, about yeah. There you go. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. I just thought <laughs> the point let me let you... me dream my movie dreams that make no sense. <laughs> For sure. Go ahead. But uh the uh the part that made me laugh the most was uh 
Or I just laughed at this part was when she was checking. She walked in her house and like it was telling her all like the messages and stuff. And you have five Tinder notifications. Oh, I know. And I was like, like oh, boy, how many do you have? I don't have Tinder anymore. No, you're done with no. Tinder. I I took a time out from time all out. that shit. Tinder eh. time out. Fair it's enough. A, it's it gets dumb. Let's just no, be honest. I, yeah, I know. We've heard the stories. So we're aware. Oh no, those are adventures. Those but, are um, adventures. Those are adventures. But I'm just saying, like, dumb, like go nowhere, dumb. It's like oh well. Hey, hey. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, that's annoying. I get you. Hey. <laughs> I mean, AI uh, robots could have a better conversation than that. Right. But, I mean, isn't that kind of the funny thing when you think about it? Because when AI came out, like, all the AI robot stuff came out, wasn't wasn't there a Japanese company that the first thing they tried to do was make a sex doll? Oh, I'm sure that there were companies everywhere saying, like, that that was the first thing they were trying to do. I mean, I, I, it's even funny. Like, I'm, I'm sure there company. are plenty of situations that are very ex machina. I'm very sure. Have you seen that one? Ex machina, yeah. Ex machina is fucking rad. Like, like I like I liked ex machina a lot more than I liked Megan. I just I, thought I, Megan, I Megan, Megan, was, Megan was more of like a Chucky to me, more like a Chucky. Yeah. Kind of no, for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of. I guess I liked that. I really just enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hell right. out of it. I thought that yeah. the effects of like Megan were done really well. I love the weird little yeah. scene where she's mm-hmm. like, she gets a, just before she kills those guys in the elevator, like, and she does that weird dance down the hall <laughs> yeah, with that guy, in the hallway. like yep. very like a weird, you know. I yeah. loved it. I don't care. I thought it was great. I mean, I liked the movie for sure, but uh, the uh, which part was I thinking of? God damn it. I forgot. Oh, um, no, I just and like I do. I really think that the the eyes were interesting. Yep. You know, I, I just I like the way I don't know. I still I love it. I want to talk to some AI robots. I want to ask them questions. <laughs> but the way the 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 uh the fight at the end was pretty awesome. I'm not going to oh, lie. The I love that. Head, the edge clipper. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, like the whole thing was great. And then they bring in the uh, like, I totally I don't know why I didn't see Bruce coming. You know, know uh, right. Like, get it, girl, with Bruce. Like, well done. Fucking Katie. Rock and roll. Very. uh, I thought, well, what am I thinking of? What's that? There's a Disney movie with. Is it Wreck-It Ralph? No. Big Hero 6. There's Hmm. some giant robot. That looks like Bruce. I don't know. Kind of sort of. No, I, think. Like Bruce. I could be, you um, know what? Maybe I'm just making that up. I, that's that's I, entirely I would be possible. Willing, I would be willing to bet that that is a true thing. <laughs> like there's a Disney movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I kind of I think there is. I just, you know. Yeah. But maybe it is just kind of like imagery that we're getting used to seeing. Like you kind of see like yeah. robots and just in general. I do love it though. Mm-hmm. Like I would love to ask like AI robots like questions about like what do you think about time or the concept of time, you know, or like, yeah. what do you think about yourself? Like, do you, you know, have, but it just, it's interesting yeah. to me. Like I'm fascinated by the idea of like AI and AI developing its own consciousness personality. Yeah. Right. Like well, the way that the we only, do. Uh, that would be the only way it would be fun and interesting i think because they would just be regurgitating basically answers to what you're asking them like what right. they're supposed to you know what i mean no i'm with you though 100 yeah. percent. that's what fascinates me i'm like i know that the ai stuff that we have like even if you go on like chat gpt and stuff that's something we should do for like a patreon just like have silly conversations with chat gpt that'd be another okay. fun thing we could do oh like where it writes uh, it, it, like you give it a little bit of information and it'll write something out well like but if you could have a conversation back and forth like they have that on even yes. like snapchat's got like an ai bot that you can talk to or whatever yeah. you know but like that is what's kind of interesting to me because i agree with you like i like the spit out regurgitated stuff is boring but like the idea that AI could learn to have a conversation with you, like yeah, that's yeah. pretty rad. Like I'm down well, for it, that. 
like that would be like that would be the only way I think it'd be really cool is just if they were their own individual kind of you know what I mean yeah like, yeah I get what you're saying like if it was because if it's a robot would just an answer to everything it's you know that's a no a like that I think <laughs> you know? that's what I really liked about just the whole concept of Megan and you know the yep. that development of like a specific individual consciousness that gets developed, you know, obviously in Megan, it ended badly. Yeah, sure. But I mean, like, <laughs> but if, it's if really I had, cool. For sure. It was really cool. But like, that would be my fear. If I had an AI doll, it's just like, you know what I mean? It's hovering above me with a knife at, uh, at night. Just at 3 a.m. Just like you know, ready to a go. A knife two yeah. inches from my body for six hours. Yeah. I mean, you know, but it'd be a fun ride up until then. But what if that's day one? <laughs> no, I well, I don't know. I mean, but that's kind of the interesting thing, though. You know, like the idea of AI developing personalities and like yeah. their own sort of sentience or conscious consciousness mm-hmm. is like you have. Like, I do wonder, like, okay, how would they develop as individuals? Would it be like humans where, you know, yeah, some people are like vicious, horrible, violent assholes. And some people are like butterflies and rainbows and unicorns and fucking fabulous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just like, like how humans like, have all possible, you know, personalities on the spectrum, would AI develop yeah. that? Well didn't they do some the tests with AI and wasn't it like didn't say something about world domination or something like that i've seen that stuff on yeah. like is that i don't know i uh, kind of think some of it must be a little taken out of i think there's like a okay. you know i get that like yeah. they because they start these like i've seen these videos where they kind of like whoever's interviewing sort of starts the conversation and leads the conversation into like the nightmare okay. scenario kind of thing do you know like what i mean coerced. your cores Right. Like they're leading the AI conversation into that. And it's, you know, it and it does sort of like if you watch the interviews and if, like, to me, it's one of those like, OK, that's it's just regurgitating and following the line yeah. of like stuff that you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So, like I've seen like- I've seen that's why I think it's interesting, though, is like, OK, mm-hmm. these these AI robots, if you're so afraid of all these nightmare scenarios with them, stop teaching them that. Like, oh, they're sure. only going like, to learn that from us. Yeah, We're the ones that, was programming another, him. that was another thing I was going to say. It would be like, if they're going to have their own personality and like their own outlook on everything, wouldn't you have to teach them technically? That's what I'm saying. But like, like, but then if but you then teach them just... and keep so like, that's, okay. that's the thing that I think is interesting, especially because you I know that it's like one of those like, ooh, the fear mongering gets more views on sure. the YouTubes and the whatever. But well, yeah, for yourselves. Right. But it's like that is the only reason AI would learn it is because it's mm-hmm. so prevalent in our digital culture and in the way that we would communicate with them or ask them questions. It's like yeah. their learning process is obviously meant to be learning from humans. If you're so afraid yeah. of what they're going to do, maybe you need to like look at human behavior a little bit and like mind <laughs> your own store for a hot minute. <laughs> well, for sure. But no, no, no. Like the point that I was kind of going towards with that was um, if you have to, if like, because then wouldn't people just teach? Like, because they wouldn't really have their own outlook. They would just have your outlook. You know what I mean? Like, so they wouldn't really have a personality. They would just be no, building. I mean, Okay, but here's let me molded? let me get a little bit meta on you then. Okay, okay. It, I'm not I'm not saying like anything out of like I'm not saying like it wouldn't be cool in that way. I'm just saying if they have to be taught, you could just mold them into whatever you want them to be, couldn't you? No, this is exactly I no, I'm with what I'm with what you're saying. Like, okay, if you have like an AI whatever and they are gonna mm-hmm. develop a personality, like if if like imagine the Megan scenario is is a real scenario AI world mm-hmm. and they learn and they develop like well, they like yes, they are absolutely only developing a personality based on the environment they're in because you're the one who's teaching them. Let me get a little meta on you. Is that not how it works with parents and kids and the way humans do it anyway? 
Like, do you not like it's that nature versus nurture thing, right? Like, yes, you have the natural programming, but the environment and the atmosphere and the Mm -hmm. things that you learn around you have an effect on how you develop as a person. Right. For sure. Yes. Um, but uh, where where was I? I I was thinking about like <laughs> where we we're, we're getting well, like, are we getting a little too lofty here? I just I love this I love this well, conversation. Thing, I'm so fascinated by all well, the yeah, all the sure. like wild possibilities, you know. Yeah. Well, like okay, but again, like Megan, she couldn't really feel pain, right? Right. Okay, okay but so, a, a robot but, wouldn't, right? Unless you would find sure, a way sure. to program it. For sure. But I think, like, on top of that, like, a lot of the way people wind up being bad people is through, like, abuse and stuff like that. Right. That they so, learn, they learn, like, violent people learn violence, like, are violent because they learned it. Right. No, I so think that's could, true. So could you teach, could you teach other than just sight and sound, could you teach it physical violence as a bad thing? I, well, I guess that's kind of a stupid thing to say, because of course... No, you that's an interesting but, con- Like, that's an interesting concept. I'm like, I have to yeah. pause because I have to think about it. So, like... You couldn't, because, you couldn't... Because the reason we as humans, right, mm-hmm. like someone that grows up like abused or, if you know, if you experience violence, like the pain and discomfort element physically and emotionally is what like kind of causes that like psychological, emotional, spiritual, <laughs> what, you know, that will mold your personality for sure. Right. That wounding or whatever. Yep. But if AI doesn't have the sensation of physical pain or emotions to understand emotional or psychological pain or stress or anxiety, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but see, this is interesting to me then. So, like, why would they then become violent? There's not really a need for it because, okay, like, well, sorry, this I'm is just... going to become such a like <laughs> human experience sort of conversation right now. And I'm really down for it. So, like, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm more so saying, how are they going to know physical violence is what physical violence is? Without being able to feel physical violence, no, you know I, I mean? like, like I understand what you're saying because what would how would they ha- they would have to like mathematically quantify damage to their parts or something like that in yeah. order to like make a yeah. determination of uh, t- as to what level of upset they would be, and you would still have to program that into them. So if yeah. you if you this is so fascinating to me, like. I can ask a lot of questions about things for sure. <laughs> no, but I love this. Like I I would yeah. so love to like talk to like an AI roboticist or like someone who does this kind of programming and like what yeah. what are their capacities or capabilities to learn? But this is interesting to me. This this like if they what? don't experience so it's you know, why do humans get violent or do the things they do it's out of fear it's out of scarcity mindset it's like fighting for resources and competition but yeah. if you are an ai robot and you don't have the like fear of mortality you're yeah, just you no know, like you're either on or you're off right no. <laughs> like, well, you're, you're just desensitized without being sensitized right but so you know wh- why would they become violent then because they don't have those sensations of fear and anxiety and stress to act out of. Like that's what that's war true. comes yeah. from, right? Yeah. Scarcity mindset and fighting over resources. Yeah. Like, but like my thing if is, AI doesn't have the yeah. capacity to be concerned for their own safety or mortality exactly. or continued yeah. existence. Yeah. Why would they become violent? There's no concern for whether or not they continue to exist. Like well, one more thing too is like you could show them violence. You could teach them what violence is. You couldn't teach them what violence feels like. Therefore, could right. you teach them to inflict violence on somebody without them knowing that that violence actually harms or kills a person? Like that's the kind of what right. I'm getting. But you know that's what I mean? a like, programming thing. Exactly. 
Like, like you, you could, program you could, them to carry out a violent task. You could show them violence and then just because and then you could be like you could show them videos of guys getting the shit kicked out of them, right? And then you could walk up to your robot and you could sl- smack it in the face and you'd just be like, see, that doesn't hurt. You can do that to people. Would they know it's wrong? Well, no, they won't. They'll only know what you program them. So if you program yeah. them with some kind, you, you, you know. Yeah, because like, I'm this just is saying, so if fascinating they, to me. But if again, they have, if they have their own stream of like stream of conscience and everything and they can make their own decisions technically with like, let's just step outside see, of the this- box of programming. Right, that's but that's what I'm, what I'm saying. saying. Like so, almost like almost like a child, like teaching a child wrong, right from wrong. You know what I mean? That's like no. almost the way I'm taking it. Like I, I get what you're saying. It. Like like yeah. teaching a sort of like basic cultural human morality code, yeah. right? But like obviously, though, you know, part of the problem with that is that different cultures have different levels of that morality. You know, yes, when it comes to anything violence or sex or mm-hmm. or you know how different genders are treated like so it, it does again it comes down to what they learn from humanity whether it's being programmed yeah. into them or it's something that like yeah. they start to develop their own sentience and they yeah. can make their own decisions and determinations yeah that is what really is interesting to me is that yeah. if they would become self-aware the way that humans are sentient, conscious, self-aware. Yeah. Would their self-awareness, right, of their being a robot and, again, not having the same mortality concerns mm-hmm. or resources concerns, like robots don't have to eat. They don't necessarily yep. need to, like, they might have to be concerned about, like, weather elements and, like, being yeah. indoors and shit like that. But, like, they don't have the same needs that humans do and they're not going to have the emotions again, necessarily. Like you say, like sensations of pain, right? Yeah. Yeah. How then does that consciousness and personality develop? Like, would it become something very sociopathic where it would cause harm (laughs) with absolutely no, you know, interest or concept of it causing harm or would it, you well, know, yeah, recognize a, what other beings consider yeah, to be harmful. To like, because, okay. Because to feel that that was a wrong thing to do without feeling physical pain, you would have to have empathy, technically. Right. 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 So would they have empathy? And that's that's kind of the thing. It's like would you, would you have to program empathy or would they have empathy if you know a if they conscious? develop consciousness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's does it have like, to be pre-programmed? Or yeah. is that something that they would have yeah. to see? But that's such an interesting thing then, too, with consciousness in general. Yeah. You know, is empathy necessarily learned? Because if someone is, you know, th- if someone doesn't have empathy, right, which is that like antisocial or sociopathic mm-hmm. or like whatever. It's not I... like it's not necessarily a choice, right? Like, um, it's just that they no. don't understand it. We also need to talk to a psychologist now. I'd be down. That'd be the shit. <laughs> Have a psychologist on? Yeah, talk to like some, like we need to get like a psychologist and an AI roboticist programmer. And yeah. we need to like, ha- like have conversations with them about this because I'm fascinated. I'm like, I would just, I would have a psychiatrist on here just talking about serial killers. <laughs> I would love to hear. Okay, it. but like, like, isn't that sort of interesting though? Of because psych- that's, that's what I'm thinking of, though, is yeah. like Richard Kukul- Richard Kuklinski. Yeah. The Iceman. We've talked about him. Um, but like serial killers, for the most part, like they have a history of violence in their household or they have a history of neglect. You know what I mean? Or something like something along the line went sour. Like, but that's what I mean. It's like empathy. I think empathy, you have to, like empathy has to be. I don't know. I, innately I think, in you. Yes, but I think it also has to be taught to you in like in practice. Like you like you you see things and you're supposed to feel sorry for them. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. You see people feeling sorry for things, right? When you're a kid. So you have empathy, but empathy is a 
it's it's i think it's more so how you're treated but yes you can like a lot of people have empathy just you know through just but that it, you know person. it's again it's is it is it necessarily nature nurture or it's like it's got to be a combination of it right like because again richard Kuklinski, i would say it's a combination i think you have to have you have to have certain characteristics like um personality traits already right. you have to be a certain kind of person and then well, you have they to have... so the psychologist guy in that um the the i is it conversations with the ice man or what like that is yeah, a, the a, ice yeah, where that they recorded that psychologist talking to Richard yeah, Kuklinski and how he had like what it's like antisocial antisocial personality disorder and then he had um how would he have it's something else where like he just had no empathy like he or, he or like like a lack of of fear or risk aversion or something like that I it, it whatever it was is. Like the yeah. psychologist was talking about, some people who have these traits yep. end up being like bomb diffusers yep. or yeah, yeah. airline pilot or like, you know, test pilots for prototype. Yep. Like they're not afraid to try and do those things or they're not afraid yeah. to, to do those kinds of high I think it's, jobs, but yeah. they're not necessarily violent or don't do things like because they didn't grow up in that. And inf- like he had a fucked up environment that he grew up in. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like you have to have certain personality traits already, like because I mean, you you develop who you are. You know. Well, so mean? that's but that's interesting to me too, what? though, because when you again look at AI, if AI can like plug into and download the internet and everything that's on yeah. the internet, it's like every possible. Well, yeah. Every possible atmosphere. Every possible like potential good or bad or whatever good bad and different is available out there if they have access to all of that like how how do they pick and choose like if yeah, they were to become know. sentient and you have access to a informational experience if not the like sensation human you know emotional experience of like any different scenario and they have access yeah. to all of it yeah this is fascinating to me. But I think like that that's like that's one of the reasons the military was looking at like they're looking at having rope uh, not even like a- artificial well AI technically but they're looking at having like robot fighters because they don't have to eat, they don't have to sleep. You know what I mean? Like I mean, okay, like you can program them to be any way any way you want. And, and they like, already have drones and stuff like that. For sure. But they're looking to like mechanize the military like hardcore. Which, okay, can could could we could we let's have a thought experiment about that, and maybe we'll okay. be wrong. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, they had a thought experiment that the atomic bomb would cause world peace because if everyone had it and and understood mutually assured destruction, everyone would stop fighting, and we haven't done that. So, yeah. You know, I'm not, neutrality in nations. <laughs> I'm not going to say my that my airy fairy ideas here are, uh, you know, have any sort of historical <laughs> proof no. that it's possible. But it's interesting to me to think about developing a mechanized, like completely mechanized military that would be robots, because essentially, then, like, who is really you're? It, like it's just a video. Tomorrow, it's just a yeah. video game. Then that's all it is. You're just a video game. I mean, now. Essentially. But I think I think in a lot of ways, if that would happen, that's probably how the world's gonna end. You know what I mean? No, it's I like... don't think of it that way. I think of it as like this is how you cycle out war out of like the human experience by turning it into something that is so separated from the human experience mm-hmm. that it's like, what is the point of that anymore? Like you're just it's just a bunch of like rich dudes and governments just building toys so that they can blow each other up. That's all it is. I hope you're right, but I mean, how humans are, we're shitty. We're so shitty. Listen, but I have hope, and I believe that there could be... He's in, got some over there, and I want it. It's fucking man. In, that, the that, infinite, that, yeah. in the infinite multiverse, anything is possible. I choose to believe that it's possible that, that this is how we cycle out of war, is by removing humans from it, and then seeing that it's just like such a 
it's just a silly little game. I think a more likely scenario is that we send we we're just overrun by robots and we just the like human Terminator. Race, uh, yeah, but like directed by nations. You know what I mean? Like like a world war, but you can you can parachute fucking thousands of robots into mainland USA and have them you know like um, like day after tomorrow, shit. You know what I mean? Fighting like robots and stuff like See, that. Like, that I don't know. That is something. Yeah, I'm saying, I, if but they that can becomes for okay. But like, see a target and shoot it, and you say shoot anything that moves that's not you. They could take out a a lot of people. Okay, in a short but again, time. so AI would have to develop to the point that it can think for itself for that to happen, right? Because otherwise, there would still have to be a human behind whatever the robotics is controlling it in order for, like, the war to continue or the destruction or whatever to continue. It's like a drone, right? You still need someone to operate it. Yeah. But they don't like, self-operate. I'm, so, like, well, I'm if saying they like, were to become program, sentient. Right. If you could program them to kind of self-operate in that way, drop them on an, on some, somebody's soil and tell them, any any human being on this on this land you see to shoot. I think right. you can do that. You I'm know, sure you could, but and then they're just gonna walk around and just fucking cap at, cap people. I think I that's don't know. I don't I don't quite have that fatalistic view, I guess, because I just think I, that like there's so much I don't have that much I... faith in the human race. I really don't. <laughs> I do. Uh, listen, I do, because I, I think that, you know, the the more that we have conversations like this and have like yeah. concerns over stuff like this, yep. the more I mean, it's it's a very sort of self-reflective thing for humanity. Yeah. Right. Like, OK, now there is this here is this huge potentiality in artificial intelligence. What mm-hmm. if they could become conscious, sentient, self-aware and start yeah. having their own thoughts and 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 making their own choices independent of any programming that that we could possibly have for them. Right. Doesn't that possibility just by itself, even with regardless of how real it is in our reality or how far away it might be, it does cause us to have these conversations about humanity and have humanity look at itself and recognize like, okay, oh yeah. The only way that those things would happen is if we continue to present that example. Yeah. Because that's the program that runs, right? Yeah. So I, in my mind, like, at least that that is provoking that conversation in people, yeah. right? Yeah. I just, I don't know. I think, I think AI, when it gets to that point, it's going to be used for, ba- like, bad not good i i think there's gonna be billionaires okay but think of it this way no i understand what you're saying like i get i get the element of like i just don't have that much faith in the human race i don't okay but (laughs) like first of all like you have to consider like even if you're gonna go at it from like a conspiracy angle right but from like the rich people are just gonna like they can kill everybody okay but they can't because like if you have robots that are slaves that are doing all of your resourcement, like at, at, at what point does it become pointless to just be like a handful of humans on earth running all the robots? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you need your human, like con- the, the whole function of society doesn't yeah. work without all of us underlings. You I'm know? Not saying, and they know that to some degree. Yeah, like, I'm not saying billionaires kill like, will send robots to kill like their own people. I'm saying like in a war, like sending robots to different. No, yeah, I get it. But like I'm saying, at some point you need somebody to be the barista who's handing you the coffee outside of the Starbucks. If you like your life so much and you got, you know, like at some point (laughs) there's a self-preservation element that kicks in, you know, at any angle that you go at things, I think. But, but to be honest, you never, I mean, it, that day probably will never happen where we'll have mechanized soldiers because we have atomic bombs that keep kind of everyone in check. You know what I mean? Like, they have atomic bombs, we have atomic bombs. You know what I mean? No one's yeah, I releasing do still, them. Like, I do still. They'll go blow up one in the fucking ocean just to, you know, jump up and down, but no uh-huh. one's releasing like... atomic bombs. 
on other nations. You know what I mean? Right. Like they'll blow one up in the ocean. Who gives a shit? But you know, well, who I mean, gives a shit about Flipper? Nobody well, cares. No, no. I'm not saying like that. No, I know. I get what you're saying. Like they do the testing and stuff I mean, like that. It's shitty. And none of it's it. good. Like yeah, it's shitty that they do it with all the nuclear stuff. But but it's just a flex. No, it's, I get that, and I'm with you on that. But I do think I still am, am on the side of I think that as humans, we have at least evolved to the point where we're having these conversations. Right. And yeah. the more like, I mean, you have to I think that to some degree, you kind of have to consider, too, that like with the the access that we all have to the Internet and being able to see so many different, you know, pieces mm-hmm. of information opportunities to look at information whether it's real information or not real information right like we well, have I mean, so much more access to be able to see things that are going on in the world and have yeah. these conversations I, there's well, there's less i think we look at that like the corruption yeah. of like people at the top or whatever and it's like but their their stability is crumbling because of the access that we now suddenly all have to yeah. like the internet and all of the things that we can yeah. get to with it. But we have to keep in mind that not all of us have that access. You know what I mean? There's nations out there that No, don't yeah, know that's what the true. Fuck. They don't know anything. Really like North Korea, they don't have access to anything outside of North Korea. North Korea is the world. Right, and they're you know very I mean? brainwashed. See, but that again is very interesting. So then like what sort of so if you have an AI robot software or whatever that is like operating running or learning off of that environment Mm -hmm. how does that develop and and you know what i what impact does that have again but uh, again at least at least the conversation is being provoked yeah i mean in in uh, yeah in that nation i would say it's they'd probably use that like a as like a private police force or, you know I mean? They'd oh be no, horrible bad. things. Yeah. Nothing good. Yeah. I mean, I'm no. not saying, I'm not saying the U S would be any better, but you know what I mean? Like, well, the, I mean, we'd the U S would at least pretend or try to pretend to be better. Yeah. Like the U S would I mean, be, we, I, if, we you know, to get to, you know, no, yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with that. Is it? Yeah. That's a kind of um, an interesting conversation too, though. Is it something that is as overt as North Korea, or is it something that's more sort of like the covert, like distract you with consumerism, so you're just not paying attention? Like, there's yeah. different levels of it, right? Yeah. So it does it like it can be it, it can be overt like North Korea, or it could be yeah. something more manipulative. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like that's kind of the way I feel. Like that's just the buffer, an atomic bomb. Yeah, I mean, I love I love how we've gotten to this like very like what is the post apocalyptic world going to look like, or what is the you know the utopia world that I believe in? (laughs) When I think about it, it's a possibility. You know what I mean? Everything is possible in the infinite multiverse. The like, that you are know, screws, I mean, you got to pick you got to <laughs> pick the reality that you want to be in and like just really yeah. focus your good vibes on it. So right. I'm going to choose that. Like, I would really love it if there was such a thing as a Megan who would learn and develop a For personality, sure. but would become just very chill like me and would just like want to hang out and go, you know, hiking and stare right. at clouds and stuff. I mean, I would be completely down for it if it was like a good to do, a, you know, a good all around person. Yeah, you know I mean, if it came pre programmed as a good person, that's not going to knife me in my fucking sleep. Okay, I'm in. Yeah. If I don't have to teach it empathy and how to be a good person, you know what I mean? Like, if I could kind of teach, the, like, give them an angle, but like as a child, they kind of figure that out. You know what I mean, I but like again, it is. It's like we humans don't have any guarantees either. You you can try to pre-program a kid That's with true. like all, you know what That's I true. mean, but if you but end I mean, up with them, a, give them the foundation at least. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, best intentions, a hundred percent. I'm with you like, on that. Best intentions. Take away any ability of them fucking killing my whole fucking neighbor block. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need that. 
I don't need that. I don't need cops knocking on my door asking yeah. me why the blood trail's coming to my door. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened. Know. Well, but, yeah, Megan. Megan's up at 3 a.m. Staring my out the toy window. Did it. My yeah. toy, yeah. My, yeah, my that toy is why. Your toy? You're a 35 year old man. <laughs> with a doll, with an AI right? doll. Yeah, for real. Immediately, their minds would go to that's a creepy sex doll. It's got to be. Right. No, I agree with that. But I'm sure that's exactly what they would think. I don't know. I think it would be a different case for like a girl to have one than a guy. Or maybe AI I would have doll. like instead of a Megan. Dude, I let me tell a... you what. If I could have an AI dude around the house to just like fix shit and clean the gutter <laughs> so I don't have to. Just, just build me a robot that's isn't gonna clean that, my apartment. Like, isn't that terrible? Yeah, What's like on, can I just like if, don't we all just want the the Jetsons <laughs> situation where robots <laughs> Yeah. Are cleaning the house, doing the laundry, mowing the lawn, uh-huh. taking care of the cooking. I mean, this might life of this luxury. Might, I was gonna say the only conversation I need to have with my Roomba is bing boop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, get it going. Yeah, Go yeah, do yeah. the thing. But like, we got <laughs> Roombas. You know, maybe who can yeah. say? Maybe in ten years we'll have our own like housekeeper robots, and you don't I have to do so. the dishes anymore. Like. Move I from dishwashers so. and laundry machines to like robots that do it all for you. I'm not gonna lie, we're pretty good with the dishwasher. We just we run it like every day. I mean, that doesn't <laughs> sound very yeah. good to like environmentalists and shit, but you know what? I hate no, a fuck. No, I yeah. fucking hate dirty dishes. I'm with you. I, I like I try oh. to keep up with it too. No, I agree. Yeah. But wouldn't it be great to have a robot that just did it and then you didn't have well, to? And then clean my bathroom and my in my kitchen and my living room. A hundred percent. Yep. Everything. I'm with it. Like <laughs> I'm about my it. Car while you're at it. Like have robots doing all the stuff that we don't want to do so that we can all be free yeah. to do the things we do want to do. I mean, my brother and I, we have a vacuum a vacuum that vacuums for us. And we have a mop, basically. It's like a Roomba, but it it scrubs your kitchen it's floor. It's a Roomba mop. There you go. That's kind of cool. like it's kind of like, it's more like a. So uh, you're well on your way to being the Jetsons. What are those? What are those mops that have the button? Swiffer. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a Swiffer, an automatic Swiffer, where it just it'll spray and then it'll scrub the floor. Okay, but don't you have to like like? Does it just go do it by itself yeah. or how? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's got That's like sensors. Fun. I think it has sensors, or it, it'll get close to a wall and it'll like turn. Yeah, yeah, I but, like, like it. It'll, it'll, yeah, we, we're a, anything I can, I can cut out of my life. I'm game. But that's what I'm saying. Like, yep. if you could create these like AI robots, even if they're not necessarily sentient, mm-hmm. and they can do the things, you know, you could have AI robots that handle like mm-hmm. garbage removal, and you could have AI robots that like. Mm -hmm. it's just like that's the thing that i think is fascinating too i i know Mm -hmm. that there's that conversation of like oh it's going to replace people's jobs and it's like okay fine we'll figure out universal income then i don't know what to tell like well i think people should have like yeah it should replace those jobs because people should have more opportunities for more abundance in life and more doing the things that they really want to do and working on cool stuff you know creating awesome things yeah, that's what we should be doing. Yeah, like I mean, ideally, <laughs> that, that's a lovely utopia idea, isn't it? Where you have AI robots that do all the functional type things that humans don't want to sure. do, and humans yeah. just get to create and do all the creativity things that they like that we all like to do. That is like our natural state, and we all live in a perfect, beautiful harmony, right? Yeah. We're like. Nobody needs money because all of the like resource functionality type things are taken care of by AI robots and the rest of us just like hang out and enjoy life all the time. Yeah. I like this one. Let's go with that. Well, there was a uh How do I I'm going to write that book. Let's well, there was it. kind of a Nick's 1984. Started... We're going to replace all of this in the human consciousness bubble <laughs> with my happy little fucking rainbows yeah. and unicorns utopia shit. This yeah. is what we're going to do. Well, there was a uh there was a movie, um, oh, what the fuck was it called? It was a Matt Damon movie. It was like a post-apocalyptic kind of thing, like a futuristic thing. Uh, Matt Damon? Yeah. Post-apocalyptic? Like recent. Like recent. Oh. 
Oh, uh, God, I can't remember. But it was basically... I'm going to look it up, because the only thing yeah, I can think of is up. The Martian when he's on Mars, I'll buy nope, his loans. It's not The Martian. It's, it's, it's a movie about... They basically have, like, a utopia above Earth that you get to go to if you're, like, a certain status or, like, rich enough or something like that. And then Earth is just, like, a robot kind of, like, wasteland kind of thing. Not, like, wasteland, but, like, a shitty, you know... Stuff like that. And like no, this, my uh, my idea is that we all live together in harmony on the surface of the earth. Yeah. Did you? Uh, but uh, I'm trying to find the movie. It's a Matt Damon movie. It is. It's probably five or six years old. Elysium. That's where, like, Elysium. There you go. That's a. That's kind of that idea. The year twenty one fifty four. Elysium. The Elysium is like their utopia. Like, you can go there with, like, cancer or, like, anything, and they can put you in this machine and it'll cure you. Like, it's it's an interesting okay. movie. And there's, like, abundance of food and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's, but that's what it's I'm saying. an ideal place to live. But like, it's a Let's live in the planet in the world where we're yeah, all on but, the Earth together. The robots not... handle the, the menial mm-hmm. things that we don't want to do. And because they do that, there's no such thing as needing money and currency. We just all have the resources we need. Yeah, but that's not Elysium. Elysium is the place of Well, whatever, Earth. that's the movie where I'm the writing. Poor, where all the poor people are. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not trying to create that kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead it's, and write my own. It's almost, it's almost the idea of the rich people in the high tower looking down on the poor, pretty much. Like, it's a good I'm, movie. No, I'm sure it's very like yeah. interesting. But yeah, but that's I'm gonna go ahead and create the world where the utopia is everybody gets to experience the utopia. Yeah. Like that scene in the end of Mad Max where he, they open the water gates and everyone gets water. I d- I don't remember that. I don't know if I've ever you, actually uh, watched you Mad Max seen the in its Mad entirety. Max. Sorry. You haven't seen the new the, or the new one? You haven't seen the new one? I haven't seen any of them. Oh, I have, I've seen the Mad Max uh, nod episode of Rick and Morty. Does that count for anything? Not really, but okay. <laughs> no. I mean, okay. I would say no. I tried. I would say, I'll take an owl on that one. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. I'm surprised you haven't watched that. I thought that was. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just I never that was kind in of a movie collection. That like Mad Max the or the the first Mad Max or the Road Warrior, not Mad. Max. I don't I, no, I don't have that one. That's sorry. What I've been thinking about lately is Princess Bride. I want to watch that one's on my I've mind lately. Princess Bride. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. Princess Bride. I don't know why that one's like that's not spooky season <laughs> related, but what is um? Oh, I know God. what. What is the what is the the movie? It's got Tom Cruise in it, and it's um, like him with a it's it's like it's kind of in the in the same realm as like uh never any story like that kind of storytelling oh legend legend yeah Legend's all right i, I, that, I watched is that legend the one with time. like the weird giant devil is that like dude? a unicorn yeah there's, a, there's like a unicorn in yeah them. I, and like tom cruise is trying to is he trying to find his wife I don't oh, like know. They, is kid, Jennifer they kidnapped Aniston his wife or it's some girl. They kidnapped some girl. I don't think it's Jennifer Aniston. I think it's somebody else. I can't remember. It might have been. I don't know. But the devil, I can't remember who played the devil, but I thought it was like a pretty big 1985 actor. Ridley Scott legend. Like that movie's all right. Like when they're. Uh... Oh, Mia Sarah. Is the girl? Yeah, 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 yeah. Saying, it's Jennifer Aniston. I don't know what maybe I don't know yeah. what I'm thinking of with Jennifer Aniston. Some old movie that she was itty bitty in. Speaking of never ending dude, story, listen, no, that fucking devil dude scared the yeah. shit out of me as a kid. Oh, it's 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 a pretty good like devil. Like yeah, I mean it 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 looks very good. It's no, yeah, and time. like. God, think about the makeup and the like prosthetics that he had on his head that he had like you know what I mean like think how yeah. heavy that would be right. that's gonna be a lot <laughs> oh I just thought of something speaking of like never ending story mm-hmm. I was gonna say we we learned trauma through movies when we were younger 
The, uh, I, I think that where, is absolutely correct. The scene where, uh, where the, that the was swamp it? takes fucking Atreyu's horse. Yup. That's the one of this fucked up, but that's such a fucked up scene. What's the horse's name again? Yorker. I hate uh, uh, God oh, damn I it. can't I, remember. Falcor so is the dog dragon thing. Yeah. I know Atreyu is the, the hero kid, right? I think so. Falcor was the shit. Falcor was the shit. Yeah. Sebastian was the kid who was reading the book. Yo. I can't remember. It's I cannot so remember either. Isn't remember. that kind of weird? I like my I'm drawing a blank. But yeah. I do remember that scene and it is very intense. And isn't that <laughs> isn't yeah. that like the entire world is being consumed by the nothing? Like Yeah. Isn't like that, that yeah. kind of an intense concept all on its own right. too? Like just being consumed by nothing. Right. And then you got other movies like uh another weird movies like The Labyrinth. I that has been a long time since I've seen the labyrinth, it's a like a very long time. But yeah, definitely also very weird. Yeah, like labyrinth is, labyrinth is a fun movie, but it's just. Oh no, I'm thinking of Pan's so Labyrinth. Weird. That was like really artsy and weird. I don't yeah. know if I've seen Labyrinth with David Bowie. I yeah, gotta I watch say, that. Labyrinth is a movie. I think it was made in the like early early nineties. Uh, late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. Like yeah, it was in that. It was in that that area or like the, when they were making like some of those movies mm. um but yeah david bowie is a uh he's kind of like the bad guy or the antagonized you know what i mean like david bowie is a bad guy isn't that just kind of silly it's a, i mean i've never been a fan of david bowie's music really like, people yeah people think i'm crazy I, fame fame's a great song but I don't like that, I'm not like I like, you know, again, it's yeah. kind of like, yeah, the popular hits are, are probably more mostly what I right. know. But like David Bowie as a personality, I do kind of enjoy. Yeah, he was he was an interesting. But wasn't yeah. it wasn't it stiff like he was like gender neutral? He wasn't a gender or something. I don't know. I should I know this like because the, I know that, that like. <laughs> like I mean, you know, people like Bowie and like. Iggy yeah. Pop and Prince, they were all they were all very sort of like cool sure. and outside of, you know, social norms before woke culture kind of. Right. One of the one musician that it drives me nuts that people like he's so big. I, I just don't get it. I think uh Bob Dylan. I don't get that either. I'll I am fucking, not a big fan. If we're in a car ride, like a three hour car ride, and you put a Bob Dylan CD in, I will fucking crash this car. Like and I will kill I, in the uh, I, I think I think we might have talked about this before. Like I totally would prefer my... like Jacob Dylan, like in the Wallflowers. Wallflowers, a hundred percent. Like yeah. the lyrics are better, the music is better. I don't sure. understand the Bob Dylan thing either. I also kind I... of you know I think that there's a lot of like, I think for me some of it because I was so. Mikhail and McKenna were visiting, right? And like Mikhail listens <laughs> to a lot of very like James Taylor and like Elton John, but like a lot of I more kind John. of like I love Elton John, but he nope. was playing a lot of stuff that was a lot more sort of like slow, sort of I don't know, you know, 60s, 70s, like slow rock, I guess I would say, right? Uh -huh. Like very, very in the James Taylor, Jackson Brown kind of, which I, I'm not like saying at all. Like that kind right, of thing? like a lot more. Right. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's just. I've it's, seen I don't have. Scenery. I'm not a. Yeah, I'm not against yeah, yeah, it. it. It just gets to be yeah. a little bit slow for me. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. Like it, James Taylor's great. Yeah, I've yeah. seen a great song. Yeah. And, and going to Carolina in my mind, great song. Yeah, right. I, like, I just but I can't I, listen to what, a lot of it all in a row. Yeah, but what is is he, he's what? Nineteen? Was he nineteen? Twenty-one. He's finally 20. old enough to okay. to come on out and have some beers. But isn't it fucking weird to see a twenty-one-year-old with a Metallica T-shirt or like a James Taylor T-shirt or something like that? Isn't that fucking? Do weird? you know, like, what interests me though is like I don't know. I guess like I just know Michaela McKenna like know that stuff and like that stuff because like Asia and and I and like okay. Nathan, you know like they've learned about it from us. You know. Yeah. 
like McKenna actually. So it's so funny. So McKenna is like a freshman this year in college. And it's so funny to me, like her first couple of weeks, she's like, yeah, I'm telling everybody about all these movies because they don't know about like Ferris Bueller's day off and, and the burbs and like, you know, and they mm-hmm. don't right? like all these yeah. movies that are like classic from when I was a kid that I really loved that like, the only reason they know those movies is because they hung out with us all the time. And we were, mm-hmm. all, you know, we they learned it from us. Right. Like AI, again, the programming happened from the people then the environment. Right. But now you know how I feel when I bring movies up to you. And I'm just like, you say you don't see them. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Which one? What? When, when, when I bring up movies and you say you haven't seen them. Oh. It, oh, it hurts sorry. My soul sometimes. No, I'm so like the other day though when I was when I sent you that message and I said I made a reference to the bridge on the river quiet at work and nobody got what yeah. I was saying and I was like, did I just pull like pretentious film student <laughs> Haley card? Like, was I just kind of a jackass just there? And no, like that one, like that joke didn't land. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like you were just you. You just misread your audience, basically. I absolutely <laughs> misread my audience. That is 1,000% yeah. what happened. And then I was like, shit, am I talking about something people don't know about? So I was glad that you at least knew what it was. I was like, okay, well, I don't yeah, feel I so bad. John knows the bridge on the River Kwai. We're cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I know what it is. It's just like, uh, yeah, I feel old a lot when I talk about <laughs> music. and I do. Because I, like, I, I don't have a, like, I have a a very like big like knowledge of music and stuff like that i listen to a lot of shit so it's like i'm not like i don't listen to the radio you know any stuff like that so it's like no some yeah stuff... i'm with you on that like i don't know a lot of yeah. i i certainly don't know current music right one movie that i i want to cry when people say they haven't seen it is almost heroes almost heroes Do you Do haven't I know that movie fucking... Oh my lord! Oh my lord! Do I know this one? With Matthew Perry and and Chris Farley. Hold on. It was Chris Farley's Chris Farley's last movie. Oh, the Lewis and Clark one. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I know that one. It's yeah, such yeah. a good. Oh, movie. Matthew Perry, man, what's he? What the hell's he been doing, huh? Love Matthew Perry. Oh man, Matthew oh, Perry. God. I heard Matthew Perry was like. I don't know. I think he was like a drug addict, and I think he got sober and all that shit. Or no, like I think he did. Yeah, I think he had the same kind of like Robert Downey Jr. turnaround without the Iron Man kickback. Well, you're on you're on a show like Friends, when in your what mid twenties to mid thirties. I liked Friends. I know, but throw a fucking. Throw a million dollars a week at a fucking twenty-five year old and see oh, what happens. No, yeah, that's fair. I mean, if I gave you twenty-five, twenty-five million dollars, I would say thank you so much for the twenty-five million dollars. Yeah. I love it. I will take it. How many investments would you have? <laughs> um, I don't know. Real estate investments, car investments. Uh, no, I, I'm, well, I'm thirty-six like, yeah. now, so I can sit here and say, "Yeah, I'd invest in real estate and I'd put some money in a CD because rates are good right <laughs> yeah. now." Like, yeah, me at twenty-five? No, I. No. That... I, no, that is fair. No, yeah, you would just go bonkers. Yeah. Of course. Oh, like if I had got that when I was twenty-one, I would be pushing up a fucking daisy by now. I'd have drank myself. No, yeah, burn. I mean, I'm sure like the Twenty Seven Club is a you know legit thing for a reason because you know <laughs> for sure too much too much too soon. <clears throat> but that's okay because you know what that means. That means now is the perfect time for us to get rich. So let's just go ahead and do that. Yep. Let's just go ahead and get that rolling. Yep. I'm with it. On it. On it. I'm getting rich one paycheck at a time. <laughs> Whatever. We're getting rich one, right? I don't even know what at a time. One liquid death endorsement at a time. True that. And, and a delicious fresca. Years and the delicious fresca. Right. We'll take those endorsements fresca. anytime. And uh, right. we'll take all of the Patreon subscribers and we will love you all very much. And Find ways to help make you millionaires. We don't know. We well, can do I mean, it. You don't know. I've got such great positive utopia 
expectations and energy. I we can make well, people millionaires. Fuck it. I think that I mean they could they could bounce ideas off like what I want to know how you're gonna make yourself a millionaire. Like what are you what do you what's your stitch? Like you know what I mean? Like what are you gonna do? What's I, your but basically how are you gonna be a happy millionaire? How are you gonna I, get there? How are you gonna get there with something you enjoy? Well, that's that's the whole thing, isn't, isn't that it? What it's that, all like, about? that is what it's all about. And I think that yeah, like I mean, that's the point of doing the yeah. things that you like to do is because exactly. eventually you figure out how you make that the only thing that you do. For sure. I don't know but, the how steps to it. I think the yeah. universe has it figured out for me. And I just have to like keep doing the things I like to do and like be open to the opportunities <laughs> and the whatevers that show up. And that's sure. my airy fairy fucking that's the world I want to live in. That's the one I pick. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, that was... I pick a world where I have an editor who edits all of the podcast stuff for me <laughs> so that we have all the time in the world to just talk nonsense and bullshit all day long because I I'm pay somebody down. else to edit and post and yeah. do all the stuff. And I have all the time in the world then to just be like, Johnny, let's get some new fucking sunglasses for the podcast. Let's I actually see. did. I actually did order a new pair, but they're, did you? But they are, they're polarized. So that they might be, you know, yeah, I, no, I think like that's kind of, no, yeah, like that's the polarized. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I it's still, difficult I mean, to I, see. I will, you can I will wear them for a little them. bit and then pop them. Like this has been, this has been fun for me. I, I like the kind of like semi alien mm. look. And I, do you know who these made me think of when I first put them on? They made me think of my boy test from back okay, in the day, yeah. the wrestler. Okay. Cause he used to wear, he used to wear like narrow shades all the time. Yeah. I yeah. remember that. Call you back to our wrestling episodes. Go narrow. watch those. Didn't you yeah. wear like super narrow ones? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like, it was the style at the time, you know? Yeah. I mean, now it, it we live in the world of anything goes, but yeah, at the time it was like the popular. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I had some shades, like just like, just like the ones that he wore when I was in like what middle yeah. school or freshman or whatever. I want to say I saw Tess wrestle, like in business. Oh, I bet you did because he I wasn't this, he, like he wasn't one of the really big names. Well, like they had big names there. It was it was a it was basically just a stop on the tour. You know what I mean? Because they would just no, yeah, but that's yeah. probably why you would have seen him actually wrestle. Like you know, yeah. they'd have more of those. Yeah, but I saw Shane O'Mac. I mean, I saw. I, I can saw love Kane. Shane O'Mac. I saw love Kane. Kane fucking get up. And now uh, Kane is know? a politician. <laughs> it's so weird. How um, boring! Went from being very see... exciting to being very boring. Right. I got to see Val Venus bring a bring in a hoe train. That was oh pretty fun. Oh my god, and I bet that was the most funnest thing for you. Val Venus was pretty fun. He, he was like, because he brought it, they were all like the things women, that were acceptable in the wrestlers. late nineties, man. It was all women wrestlers, and he was just calling yeah. them in fucking ring. Like, just, like ah, it's so funny. It's so funny because Val Venus, I mean, he was like he was like an in shape dude. But he was just so fuck ugly. You know what I mean? Like, just <laughs> like, such a weird looking dude. I'm I not mean, you I'm know. No fucking Brad Pitt, but. I, hey, whatever. You know what? Everybody's somebody's favorite yeah. flavor. But it was a fantastic wrestling fucking alter ego. So, do you have an idea of what spooky movie we're going to watch next week? I don't know. We totally skipped our mm-hmm. music bits. So, let's like revisit. Yellow card. I'm just gonna say gonna for say, the yellow right? card album. I was yeah. so cringe at how bad. Like I was like, oh my god, this is like some super oh, yeah. fancy fucking whiny emo bullshit that I completely forgot yeah. about. Like, wow. well, you you listened <laughs> to the yellow card album, right? Yeah, and I was like, well, yeah, oh, yeah. we my could just Lord. let's do that one now, and then we could do the other one next next week. No, I did listen to some of the hive the the yeah, hives yeah. that one and i yeah. i don't know i found them kind of funny like they are very cool they're very sort of they've got that sort of ska kind of like i get what you're saying yeah. like they had a similar sort of flavor a little bit to unwritten law in that way like Somewhat. A bit it, in the heavier yeah. elements but i like that their lyrics are a little bit sort of like outrageous yeah well like you uh 
the hives are just they were all about that like it was like an early 2000s like garage rock revival that's kind of what their sound was you know what i mean like that's yeah. when it got really popular so i want to say i don't say think i heard like i don't think i'm familiar with them even their older stuff oh they've been around like I th- yeah i think 93 we said yeah last, you said last time yeah but uh they um I've listened to them like here and there, like a lot, like just throughout my youth and shit. But uh, I, I just saw they came out with a new album, so I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'll listen to that." Because I'm from just familiar with them. No, like, I like. I'm good. not familiar with their stuff, their stuff, but I liked it. I thought it was yeah. fun. Like that I, I opening song, like "Bogus Operandi." Like I saw that immediately the... and had to laugh. I was like, "I love that." That's yeah. So, I, like, great. I mean, I would say that's the best song on their album. I would say that's the best one on that album, but I, uh, I like the sort of cleverness in that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I I heard the front man is pretty renowned, so he's like a lot of people like the front man. And then, okay. um, hmm. I think they're from Sweden. They're not American. Oh no, yeah, I think we looked that yeah. up too. They're a Swedish band. They're a Swedish rock band. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, I funny, dig it. I, I thought they like. I kind of like. They've kind of had the same sound all their all career, so it's like the when if I but if I kind of like the lyrics, enough, they're like a little bit sort of clever and sort of like I don't know if silly is yeah, the word, they're very but clever. like yeah, yep. I mean, not Ocean Avenue clever. Oh but. Lord, let me tell you what there were some <laughs> of those songs that I was listening to, and I was just like, oh Lord, angsty teen Haley. This one we can nix from the repertoire like we can take ocean avenue and like one year six months or like as, yeah. as the only songs off that album that we are still cool with and the rest of it is kind it's kind of like i don't know if you like uh you remember good charlotte oh, yeah yeah very, they're very good charlotte very like, good that, charlotte that and if you kind of go back and listen to that yeah. sort of like an album or whatever you're like yeah i could mm-hmm. go with just one song and be good yeah, like I don't, um, I don't need the rest of this. To be honest, like I remembered, I remembered a song off that album that I haven't heard in probably ten years. Way away, way away, away yeah. from here. I know. I'm not gonna lie. Way away is. I, I was like jamming to that in the car, yeah. right? But like, man, the further you get into that album, though, like the whinier yeah. it gets. Yeah, I would say probably way away is my favorite song off that album. No, I like that one. I do like yeah. Ocean Avenue and Ocean like one year, good. six months at the end, like you know the yeah. kind of like classic end slow song of the album, <laughs> yeah. right? Like I, yeah. I dig that one, but yep. yeah, in between that, it got pretty whiny, and I was just like, oh man, doesn't this say a lot about the things that I was programming myself with when I was a teenager? Yeah. Well, one thing I kind of look at with Yellow Card too is the. Is that violin really necessary? In a I, lot of you know songs, what? Maybe that's it? why I like violin. I don't know. I got a thing for like violin and fiddle music. Maybe oh. that's partly why I liked it because I have always kind of liked. I see, but again, like when I was a kid, yep. my grandma was big into like classical music and would play like you know, uh, the Nutcracker yeah. Suite and things like that. Like she was Mozart and Beethoven for us, and you know, different stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love talking. I, maybe that was part of the reason that I liked it, you know, because like I do kind of gravitate a little bit towards stuff like that, like soundtrack music. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I definitely yeah. gravitate towards that kind of stuff too. I dig that. I mean, I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying it's not cool. Like, because I think it's cool. No, it like, doesn't really. It, it doesn't necessarily like mm, kind of fits, I mean, kind of sort of. But my thing is, I'm looking at it from like a like like a guitar player drummer kind of standpoint you know what i mean so it's like i'm looking at it and yeah that see you have a like, different way is it cause like, necessary because in a lot but, of songs it isn't <laughs> i know <laughs> and i was gonna say like somebody probably just knows how to play it and they just kept putting it in there you know it's cool as shit i like violin but i mean no but i'm like you have a different kind of mindset though too where like yeah. you're you're thinking about it from the production standpoint too i'm sure when you listen to it yeah. like you but probably like, see, like when i, I this is kind of interesting too so like yeah. when i listen to music the first thing because i'm a writer so the first thing i zone in on is the lyrics right but like you probably zone in more on like 
how it was put yeah. together. Like you hit the drums first and like, you yeah. you know, like, and I'm going to like, I dig that. I am all about bass and songs. Like that's why I really dig folksy music, like, you know, bluesy kind of bluegrass folksy mm-hmm. music. Ooh, can we, for like next time, can we do a, a hosier album? Is that how you say it? H O Z I R. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Fucking love that stuff. We should do yeah, one of those. Uh, I don't know. Pick pick an album from Hosey. Or I'm Lewis gonna do. That. I'm gonna do an old one. Uh, this just came to my mind, and why the hell not? Okay. I'm gonna do Anthrax. Anthrax. Spreading the disease. You you're familiar with Anthrax, right? Or no? Vaguely familiar. I'm. Re- I mean, okay, I remember I'm gonna say they're all. nothing. Like, I'm sure. Crazy. Hosey. How do you say it? I don't. I don't really don't know. I would just okay. say it however you say it. <laughs> Hosier, this one. You're not oh, going to get just, beat up by is me. It just, I think it's just uh, a self-titled, self-titled album, Hosier. Hosier? I've heard Hosier, Hosier, Hosier. Something Hosier? Like that. Sure. Jack, yeah, yeah, we'll roll with that. Hosier. We'll roll with it. We'll, well, I should. I bet somebody somewhere. Spelled? H-O-Z-I-E-R. Okay. Well, like, I know it's on Spotify. One will definitely be on Spotify, too. But, like, I don't know. Anthrax is to me. Anthrax is just one of my more. I like I like them more than a lot of like it's thrash metal basically. Like yeah, but they have a lot I of, see. I wasn't. I think you and Asia. Yeah. Were more that kind of generation. You know, Asia's real big into like she really liked AFI, and I think like you know Three Days Grace and Thrice were kind of like in that mix there. Yeah. You know. Um, well, I'm they, talking. Uh, like more in the realm of like Metallica, Megadeth. Oh, okay, gotcha. No, so I'm with Metallica. That, it's that time they were part of the big four. The big okay. four is uh, Slayer, Megadeth, Metallica, Anthrax. Okay, gotcha. I gotcha. So it's uh, it's in that realm, but I I I really like Anthrax, and this album was pretty good. So it's fast angsty white people music i dig it i'm with it i mean listen if i made you listen to that emo stuff that even i forgot was that bad you know what it isn't that bad i listened to that shit when i was a kid too I, I, i'm not you know because like that was so that was like such the big I thing to, i used to rock a fucking hansen cd every goddamn day I, oh, I'm yeah. gonna, like i said i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say i didn't i did oh no Anthony i'm not gonna pretend that i didn't have like kid. the first three back backstreet boys albums of course i yeah, did i had them a hundred percent. We were such fucking we were such fucking morons. We would do the dances in our rooms and shit. Oh yeah, no, a hundred percent. Absolutely. I mean yeah, I can't, uh were we not to... taught to be good little consumers and just like eat up <laughs> right. all the like the, the current music trends? Well, it was such a weird, weird like kind of it was such a weird collection of music because it was like there was Hanson and stuff like that. And then there was like weird like slow R and B music, and then I had the album we reviewed, "Presidency of the United States of America." That right. was over. I had that when I had like Hanson and shit. That runs deep. No, I, I, I like if I went and looked at like the own. mix, the mix of music that I like. I just I can see my old CD case where I've got you know. Yeah, I've yeah. got Yellow Card and something corporate and Blink One Eighty Two, but and yeah. Limp Limp Biscuit. But then I've also got like Meatloaf and John Cougar Mellencamp and ACDC and the Eagles, you know, like, yeah, I, you know, I, isn't that kind of fun? I think because, you know, I do think that's kind of a, a fun thing that you just like, again, having the Internet now we have access to like all of that stuff so you can have a broader yeah. sort of range of things that you like. I'm gonna change my album. I'm gonna oh. save this for I'm gonna save this for another week just because Hozier is like that's more like slowed down bluesy shit. So it's kind of a it is, yeah, but I don't know. I like shit. it. I get I really like the heavy bass, I guess. Yeah. I think uh, um let me think of what it's called. Who's who's the band that we're Smashing thinking? Pumpkins. Oh, what did I? I smashing pump. I just added a song Sim- that I like. Siamese Dream. It's called Siamese Dream. Yep. I just added a pumpkin song to my uh my like songs. I've been adding a lot more songs to my like songs. 
for my uh, yeah. Spotify just to be like, whatever. I like a lot of stuff. Who cares if it goes together really well or if I really, really like yeah. it? I just want to have like, because I like being on my liked songs and having just like a massive list of, of you know, just letting it kind of loop through and shuffle. Me too. I got, well, my, uh, my Spotify that you shared on your other podcast. And then I think, I, I think you, do you follow my Spotify playlist? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, um, my Spotify, I think is John the butcher. Yeah. John the butcher. We and should, I can my, put that link in here again. Yeah, I, should, I, I don't know say, if I have my Spotify. I don't even know if I know what my yeah. username is. Well, my, my That's playlist. Pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll figure but, it yeah, out. My, my username is, uh, John the Butcher and my big playlist, I think it's like 80 hours of music. It's uh Boner Jams 2019. Yeah. It was a good year. year. Let's get some but, wine from 2019. Like, yeah. It was a good year. It's a good, it a good but vintage. Since, since 2019, this has just been a rolling snowball of music. So I kind of like that. I like having like just a massive nonsense. Like that's why I like my like songs. Oh, I wish the algorithm would kind of figure yes. out not repeating so many things and shuffle and like yeah. bounce around the playlist more. But like, yeah, yeah I, I think, don't know. I think it's fun. Yeah, I think I'm I'm kind of more to blame for that happening on my Spotify because I like songs and shit, and I I forget that that fucks with the algorithm of them coming up. Yeah, no, I know, um, like. It's just that's yeah. one of those things. Yeah. But yeah. AI if will figure wanna... it out eventually. Anyway, that <laughs> was like not a whole lot of talk about actual Megan. I don't really care because I really enjoyed the well, conversation. Well, but... I mean, to to me, to me, it's pretty summed up in what it is. It's just it's a Chucky right. e. F thing and it's it's with AI an AI and... robot that like it's does the nightmare with... yeah. scenario. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a good movie. I liked it. I, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. it. But I, I think mean, I it, really it, did enjoy it, it for the effects and, yeah. and the look of like Megan as a doll, right? Like, yeah. I do like the way that they honest, did it. I mean, that kid rolling down the hill and then he, him splattering all over the fucking road. That was I unexpected. mean, like, was that some intense stuff right there? Like, it right? really was, you know? And I mean, like, her in lying. that, like, that jacket that made her look very like an American girl doll, kind of like, yeah, very ooky spooky. Like, I like it. Yeah. I, you know, it was an interesting movie for sure. It definitely got me thinking about AI, yeah. and I really like just the, again. I love that conversation and yep. like going off into those speculation of like all the possibilities mm -hmm. of what could happen and and I don't know I do I think it's yeah. fun. it's it's a fun thought experiment to to play around with for sure what well, kind anyway. of like I was gonna say so like do you want to do a slasher movie or well I guess we could just check it out. So yeah, let's do the with. same thing we did this time and just kind of see what's available since when we pick, it doesn't always seem to work. <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't work out a lot. It doesn't work out a lot, but that's okay. You it's know what? Good. Whatever. We're going with the flow no. and it ended up being groovy anyway, so it's totally fine. But sorry to interrupt you. You've been. No, I've been Haley. And I've been Johnny. That's right. And this has been Johnny. Johnny. Haley. Haley. Day. Day. Of um, fun. Morning. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Check out our links below. Go sub join, subscribe to our Patreon. Let us make more fun content and have more fun for conversations. Sure. Please email us sure. at johnnyhaleydof at gmail.com. I want to know the psychologist's views on these things. I want to talk to an AI roboticist. I want to hear everybody's spooky tales about the time that you saw Bigfoot or a ghost or a demon or whatever. Right. I think it'd be super interesting to talk to like an engineer or something, somebody that comes up with like, yeah, that'd be the super people who are coding like the AI stuff. Yes, for sure. I would absolutely love to talk to someone sure. who does that. Hundred percent. So up. universe, make it happen. Bring us the guest that would that would talk to us about it. I'm excited. I'm here for it. Yeah. Anyway, peace out. Thanks for listening, y'all. Yeah. Peace.